Uh, okay. okay, the following interview was conducted with Trace, Tracy Thompson, president of the National Pan-Hellenic Association for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Wednesday, April 6, 2011 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Library. Welcome, Tracy. And thank hey. you very much. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little about where and when you were born and your parents and early years. All right, cool. Um, I'm Trace Thompson. I was born uh, September 29th, uh, 1989. I'm in East Chicago, Indiana. So I'm originally from Northwest Indiana. Um, uh, thereafter, we moved to Hammond, Indiana. Okay. Uh, somewhere around when I was five or six, something like that. Okay. Um, I attended. Did you go to grade, grade school there? No, yeah. I went to private school my whole life. Okay. Um, I went to private school in Illinois. Uh, it was called Loop Lab School, which was an academy that was that housed downtown for parents who worked downtown and who could just keep their students. It was uh, actually an accelerated academy for African-American students. So um, that was that was pretty Tell good. us a little about that. Would you go there all through what? I went the there. Grade uh, school and high school? K through, I uh, know, I went there K through 8th. Okay. So. That was that was a really a really good experience just to be around. Um, did you was it a day? Did you go in there go every day or did yeah, you stay there all day? every day every day every single day? Like when your parents would go to work, it was like in uh, it was located at 11 East Adams Street in Chicago, okay. which is right around the heart of downtown. So most parents would just drop their kids off on their way walking from like the train or something to go to work. So what a great thing! Yeah, <laughs> being with mom and dad, right? Okay. Yeah. So I mean, it was a great experience to go through elementary school downtown because uh, I was exposed to the business life from being kindergarten first grade so I was riding elevators with uh, like dignitaries and stuff that type of thing so um we would just walk down like Michigan Avenue and stuff for our lunch breaks and that's hard to take yeah, you know yeah. good upbringing right yeah, so. yeah. then uh, tell us a little bit about high school where you went high school I went to Providence St. Mel High School uh, which is located on the west side of, of Chicago okay. um it's an also a school for accelerated uh it's an accelerated uh, honors academy type thing college prep for um, African American students. Okay. So, was how large was the school? Is it what co-ed is boys? Yes, this boy, this boy girl is uh, the school. I think in my graduating class it was like twenty six. There may be like three hundred something, but it's the school is K to K through twelve. Okay. But I only went there for high school. So okay. it's a really good experience. Um, very strict discipline type rules. Um, if Did it was some clubs. Um, or yeah, I had like. I was we, they had all sports, so I was on all the sports teams. That's basically they had different groups, but I, I was more of a sports type high school person. So what what sports did you play? Um, I played varsity basketball, varsity softball. I did a little bit of track and cross country. I pretty much played the sport every every season. So that was good for the parents. Right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it was fun. Um, it was it was a really good experience. I can honestly say that if I did not attend Providence Samuel High School, then I probably would not be at Purdue University today. Um, the study skills that they taught me was unparalleled, unparalleled from other any any other school. Um, I kind of I was kind of one of those kids that needed the private attention, and that's why my parents continued my private education. So, do you have any brothers or sisters? Or you know? I have one sister. Okay. She is 17 years old, and she's graduating from high school this June. So. Big time for her. What are yeah. her plans? Is she coming to um, Purdue? No. At first, she wanted to come to Purdue because she wanted to uh, be an engineer. So she was in the, the Women in Engineering program for like high school students, and sure. she came here every summer, did all the camps and stuff. Um, she then decided she didn't want to be an engineer anymore, and she decided to go to IUPUI oh, okay. because she wanted to go to a university that was integrated into a larger city. So instead of staying in Chicago and being home, she just came down to Indianapolis. So. Sounds good. Well, you'll mm -hmm. be, be close. Yeah, it would be You're close. Right. Yeah, definitely. Okay, then let's talk a little bit about Purdue. How did you happen to select to come here and then uh -huh. talk about campus and then go on to the uh, National Pan Hellenic? Okay. Cool. Um, Purdue was definitely my dream school. Um, I applied. Had you heard about it? I had definitely heard about Purdue. Purdue actually came to my high school and recruited, which was small. It was it was weird because like we're a smaller school, so a lot of we get a lot of like Ivy League. Like someone who graduated with me went to MIT. Uh, we get the Howards. We get the the big big Ivy League schools. We have a hundred percent college acceptance rate, top tier college acceptance rate at my high school. So pretty big name so Purdue came and I was like oh, I didn't know anything about Purdue but I, I was a native of Indiana so I could get in-state tuition for Purdue so I was really interested in Indiana sure. schools who came to visit us um, I talked with the recruiting counselor and he told me hey you need to come down for a visit so I came down for a visit fell in love with the campus I knew then that I wanted to come to Purdue so that that's pretty amazing um, campus life here at Purdue is none you, you can't you can't duplicate it anywhere um, some people say the campus is too big I think it's just the right size feels like home to me now 
felt like home freshman it year. It gets smaller. It gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Right. And exactly. you see the same people and that type of thing, and you create your own culture. And the culture that's here at Purdue is very, like, home-like. It's open. Everyone's so cool. You can just basically talk to anyone. All right. I just What's your major? Um, my major is selling and sales management um, and okay. consumer and family sciences. So. Okay. And you're also? I'm also a resident assistant uh, at Windsor Halls. So that that's amazing. Um, I love being an RA in my residence. Pretty much keep me afloat and basically have a good time <laughs> as okay. much as possible. Right. Let's talk about the uh, National Panhellenic Association. Tell mm-hmm. the researchers a little bit about it and then some of the challenges, initiatives, and programs okay. that you've been involved in. Um, um, I'm president of the National Panhellenic Council. It's a little different from Panhellenic Association. The Panhellenic Association uh, houses the um, traditional sororities and fraternities here on okay. campus. We're the Panhellenic, National Panhellenic Council. Okay. Um, we, ha- we have a national organization that uh, has different chapters. So here we are, the Purdue chapter of the organization. We have nine, there are nine traditional organizations. There only can be nine organizations in our council. Um, they're called the Divine Nine. So it's uh, five fraternities and four sororities. Okay. So that's kind of the basis of the okay. National Family Council. Okay. And it houses the historically black fraternities and sororities here on campus. And has it been on the campus for quite a while? Yes, oh, yes, okay. it has. It has. At first it was called the Black Greek Council, but we, uh, when the national set up, we actually got a chapter oh, here. Oh, okay. So. Uh, were you involved in the, uh, during the time before your term of presidency? Oh, yes. Okay. You have to, it's, it's kind of weird, because you have to kind of be a member of the sorority or fraternity to be part of the council. In so. order to move on. Mm-hmm, yeah. So I joined in 2008 and became president here in 2010. Good. Okay. Mm-hmm. We'll go ahead and talk a little bit about um, your year. My year here uh, as National Panhellenic Council President has been amazing. I feel like I've kind of bridged the gap. There's a lot of gaps in between councils. Um, a lot of, you know, IFC, the Interfraternal uh, Fraternity Council, they don't really do a lot of events with us. Uh, we've reached out and done stuff with them, uh, such as, like, Big Man on Campus. We've worked with them and different things like that. I That's think, really caught on, hasn't mm-hmm. it? I think we've, 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 crossed, we've crossed different barriers that are against councils, and we've worked a lot with the Multicultural Greek Council. Um, which is uh, just for you know multicultural sure. um, fraternities and sororities. So, I think the year has been amazing. We've done different things with programming as to different philanthropies. Um, we've gotten on, all on one accord with March for Babies. We'll be walking on April thirtieth here, coming up. So, that's that's a pretty big thing. We've been we've done more of collaboration because that's the most important thing. And you get more things programming. done at that, mm-hmm. and more, and it's a good. Good PR and and you get out there and an outreach sort uh-huh. of thing too. Mm-hmm. Right? The, yeah, definitely. And it's it's a lot easier to coordinate, coordinate things when you're using more than one organization because right. everyone can pull different resources. Right. So How many people on the board is it? Are your officers? Um, we have ten people on the board. Okay. On the board. And then the term is what for? Is it Just by school year. It's by school year. Yes. Oh, by academic, okay. academic year. Yeah. So you want to run again? You know? <laughs> it's actually not in our constitution that you can't be president for two terms. <laughs> no one organization can hold a a, a position well, for more than one. Yeah. Down the road might be exceptions. Yeah. On that. Um, let's talk about uh, leadership, mm-hmm. uh, a leader's role in the academe and, and the professional world. Mm-hmm. Your thoughts on that? Um, I think leadership is a quality that you you have to you have to kind of perfect in college, just because so many jobs are looking for different leadership skills that you have. Um, and student organizations is definitely a good way to have it. It doesn't matter what your student organization is, but just having the experience of leading and kind of taking the initiative and kind of learning to manage groups and working groups that that's what that's what the professional world is looking for no professional no professional company is now looking for you know someone who can just do their job they want the person that can do their job and also help others around them in their area they want people to work in teams and do different things like lean six sigma to figure out better ways and more efficient ways to run companies so being in being in student organizations puts you puts you at an advantage right. in the professional good world. Experience. Mm-hmm. Right. Definitely good experience. Right. What about leadership classes? Did you have you attended any that many of the organizations um, offer? Um, yes, I took a leadership class uh, EDPS three hundred one, which okay. was a self study leadership where I just went and evaluated a organization, a student organization, for a whole semester. It was pretty interesting. Um, and you had to write a paper at the end. And I kind of work closely with the Office of the Dean of Students because that's what it's through. I work with Carol Ben Davies on the project, and it, it was it was a huge success. It it helps when you're not a member of the organization and you're looking onto the organization and how they're run and their management skills and 
position types and different things like that. It was it was really really eye opening experience. I also attended the uh, undergraduate into Fraternal Institute, which is through Greek Life, and um, I'm a Gamma class graduate. So that's that's right after school is over. It's UIFI is what we call it for for short, but that that teaches you leadership within your Greek organization. So that was very important because it teaches you how to lead your peers, and that's not the easiest thing to do all the time, but. We got some tick tips. Yeah, we got some tips and some tricks, and we we also got to collaborate within the conference. And you got to right, which made us which made us see other things that have worked for other people, and maybe can work for us. So it worked out really good in our favor for that. Very good. Mm-hmm. Um, you talked about that resident assistant for the mm-hmm. researchers. Tell them a little bit about what that involves. That you're doing. Is this is this the first year that you've done this? This is my first year being an RA. Are you yes. Gonna, you're going to try to you do it next. Yeah, year? I'm doing it next year too. Okay. Um, being a resident assistant. Um, is is very important in my life because I, I feel like to make I'm the reason I'm in student organizations is to help other students and help their collegiate experience but to have the students in a living area really impacts their collegiate experience because most of these students are so far away from home you have international students you have students who've never even shared a room with people so to help those students think outside the box and figure out ways to make things work with their roommate and also to have programs for them and you know kind of figure them the whole kind mm-hmm. of campus life figure out figure out ways to help them to figure out what they want to do and where they want to go and how they want to do things is the is a really, really good, rewarding part of the job. So that's dealing with sometimes you get floods. I had a flood one time I had to deal with. Sometimes you have to deal with roommate conflicts, like roommates want to fight, damage the property. I mean, it's a 24-hour job, but it's definitely rewarding to me. But it's rewarding. Yeah, like it's it. definitely rewarding. Yeah. What, uh, do you have uh, fresh, all uh, levels? Do you have freshmen? Or yeah, I have freshmen through seniors. Freshmen through seniors. So. Okay. Yeah, so and that's and that's the challenge in itself getting freshmen through seniors to interact collectively, because what a freshman wants to do, a senior doesn't want to do. Yeah. Did, did they all go? Did you come back for Boiler Gold Rush? Too? Yeah, and we have to be here. We we're actually here before BGR starts. Oh, okay. So, and did some of the, the, the freshmen on your hall take advantage? Mm-hmm. Of that? They definitely did, and I, I definitely encourage them to because BGR is a very important part very of freshman orientation. Yeah, it's really really yeah. done really well. Mm-hmm. How about hobbies? Hobbies. It's hobbies are hard because um, my hobbies usually turn into just business for me because I just I don't know. Um, I've just started DJing, so like that's one of my hobbies. I'm thinking that, about starting a business. So sounds good. Yeah. How about a tr- Purdue tradition? Purdue tradition. I like fountain runs. Fountain runs are fun to me just because I've done them since freshman year. It's always <laughs> cool. I mean, some people think, oh, I'm too old for fountain runs. I'm 21. No, fountain runs are still cool. <laughs> I like fountain runs. And I think it's on a list of things you have to do before, before you, you graduate. Leave, I've, yeah. I've talked to people saying, oh, I got that on my list, or Slater yeah. Hill, or whatever. Yeah. You know. An outstanding event? Outstanding event. Um, that's pretty hard. Um, there can be more than one. There can be more than one. Oh, yeah. Purdue is is very is very good about congratulating and uh, supporting people when they've done good things. And every year they have a. Um, the Purdue Black Caucus has an awards ceremony, and last year I won the Service and Leadership Award. I'm actually winning the same award this year. So yeah. to to go and to win an award like that is is very impactful, just because it, it means so much when you know you just get, kind of get a pat on the back when you kind of feel like nobody's looking. So All right, that's really yeah. good, yeah. And, and it's nice to be the peers and people recognize. Mm-hmm. The recognition is just awesome, yeah. no matter yeah. what it is. Mm-hmm. You know, I think yeah. you're right on that. Um, the next stage, what are your, you get, tell us about your summer plans and then what you're planning to do when you, you have another year. All right, ready. cool. Um, this summer I'll be working for Arthur J. Gallagher in Chicago, um, which is basically an insurance firm. We actually, Arthur J. Gallagher actually insures Purdue, so okay. that's a big one. Um, but we, um, I'll be working there as a summer marketing intern producer. So um, a little bit of sales, a little bit of marketing, it's kind of my thing. Um, so that should be that should be a lot of fun just to get out there and network, go to some Cubs games, um, play a <laughs> That's little a golf. Network by itself. Play a little golf, yeah. <laughs> it, th- that that should be fun for my summer. Yeah. Um, after the summer, I'm actually coming back for fifth year um, to pursue um, a minor in sociology, just so I could just learn a little bit more about cultures before I leave. Okay. And um, after that, I'll well this next fall I'll be applying to law school. So okay. looking forward to that. We'll keep in touch. On yeah. That. Um, in clo- anything that I forgot to ask or anything in closing you'd like to say? Um, 
no, I'm pretty sure this covered everything about leadership in my life. And well, as a leader, my my main thing that I like to push is positivity. If you have positivity within your organization, it's nothing that you can't achieve. Just just aim as high as possible, and you can't fall too far away from where you Sometimes aim. Sometimes it's good to fall a little bit because then yeah. you can pick yourself up. Exactly, and go, and go far and go farther <laughs> right. than before. So definitely, my my tip and trick to the game of leadership is positivity. If you have a positive attitude at anything, you can conquer That's right. everything. Sounds like I would agree. Thank you very right, much. No problem. I appreciate it. I got just a couple of forms.